Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I want to thank uh, John and Cody. I don't know if they are here today for holding the seminar series for the past year. And of course, to uh, James, Ling and Monkey for continuing it. I've learned a lot uh, while uh, following this series. And today I thought I would give a talk myself. So um, the, in today's talk, I will present my work that I did with Professor Bert Overett and Anthony Ashmore, who's now at Chicago. In this series of paper, which I show here, we attempted to build a vacuum configuration, which is entirely consistent with the series of, uh, vac of uh, phenomenological and theoretical constraints that I will outline throughout this paper within the context of the strongly heterotic E8 cross E8 string theory. Uh, our work builds on a huge amount of existing research, either done by our group or people from other places, which consisted, for example, in uh, building an SU4 bundle on the observable sector, which uh, leads to the full spectrum of the B minus LMSSM model. So in the first part of my uh, talk, I will review this existing um, uh, theoretical context. And then in the second part, I will explain how we build a hidden sector, a bundle for the hidden sector, which is compatible to the SU4 bundle. Then in the third part, I will uh, go on and talk about some uh, possible application in the low energy physics. And I will show how can we break supersymmetry by uh, gauging a condensation that occurs in the hidden sector. Then I will end up with um, reviewing what uh, what I did and uh, explain how how can we improve our model. So we so we work in the strongly coupled heterotic string. We start from the eleven dimension heterotic uh, for Java with wit and fury, uh, which is uh, consists of an orbifold with two ten dimensional uh, planes separated along uh, eleven dimension on a S one Z two uh, interval. One of the planes is called the observable sector, and the other one is the hidden sector. And each of them have an E8 connection associated to it. Be between the observable and the hidden sector, we can place any number of M brains, but for, simpl for simplicity, we will only place one. Um, the four dimensional effective theory is obtained after first integrating a uh, on a Calabia or threefold X to obtain a five dimensional double BPS domain wall. And then we get the um, four dimensional effective theory by integrating along this 11 dimensional interval. And most importantly, after compactification, we want to maintain unbroken supersymmetry. On the observable sector, we turn on, turn on an SU4 instant on uh, or an SU4 vector bundle to obtain the gauge group of the B minus LMSSM model. While what we do uh, in our work is we turn on a simple line bundle on the hidden sector, which uh, breaks the hidden E8 into an E7 cross E1. The Calab I will uh, now outline the Calabria manifold that we use that was um, described in a series of paper by our people in our group. Um, so we are, the Calabria manifold X is chosen to be a torus fiber threefold with fundamental group Z3 cos Z3. It is determined by three complex structure moduli and three Kähler moduli. Its degree two Dolbo homology group is spanned by three harmonic forms, omega one, omega two, and omega three. And its scalar form is, uh, is a linear combination of these uh, harmonic forms, where AI here, the AI coefficients, are called the uh, geometric Kähler moduli of the Calabiao threefold. They determine the Calabiao shape. Another important parameter will be the Calabiao volume, which is uh, determined in terms of um, this uh, Kähler moduli, AI, JK. And um, this DI, JK is the intersection number determined by the harmonic uh, one forms. Now, the observable sector, which was um, built in, uh, for example, it was described in this paper with uh, Volker Brown, uh, over and even Yang Hui He. Um, we turn on an SU4 bundle, which breaks the hidden E8 to, to the to spin 10 group. Then two flat lines, two flat Wilson lines, each associated with a different Z3 factor of the holomony of X breaks the spin 10 to an SU3 cross SU2 cross U1 cross U1. So this is the gauge group of the normal MSSM with, an U, with a U1 extension. This U1 extension is phenomenologically interesting because it gives um, 
string theory explanation for the conservation of uh, R parity. This B minus cell is then later broken by a right-handed neutrino web. So we get the usual standard model hypercharge group. But this phenomenology is very interesting, but it's not what we're interested in, in for the moment. What we're interested in is that when we turn on this SU4 instant on, on the Calabia, on the observable sector, we don't break supersymmetry, we want to preserve it. So uh, the criteria to determine that is given by the donaldson ullenbeck and Young theorem, which says N1, N equals one supersymmetry is preserved in the effective theory in the, um, if the, if the uh, bundle that you turn on is slope stable. So the slope of a bundle is determined by its first churn class and can be computed for different Calabiao shapes determined by, by A1, A2, A3. Uh, for an SU4, for an SUN bundle such as the SU4, the first churn class vanishes. So the slope of the SU4 bundle is zero. And therefore, the SU4 bundle is slope stable if any sub-bundles sub uh, have negative slope. This is a highly non-trivial condition, but it was worked out by our people, uh, uh, Volker Brown, Overwood, and Pandev, and uh, they got this stability region for the SU4 bundle. Uh, what, what this plot means is that in, uh, if A1, A23, if these scalar moduli fit inside the blue region, the SU4 bundle is stable. On the contrary, if we're anywhere outside this blue region, then it means that uh, the bundle is unstable and we compactified with broken uh, supersymmetry. Uh, now, sorry, uh, we want to find a hidden sector, a hidden bundle compatible with this observable sector. Of course, the hidden sec sector bundle must itself be slope stable. But before that, there are a certain of vacuum constraints that we have to take into account before even attempted to find it, find it. One of them is that we want the global theory to be anomaly free. And uh, this um, anomaly cancellation condition is basically a geometric, puts a geometric relation between the tangent bundle of the Calabiao the, and the uh, second uh, churn characters of the observable bundle and the hidden bundle and the five brain class. So these numbers have to vanish in order to have a consistent theory. And furthermore, we want the five brain clap, five brain to wrap holomorphic two curves, which uh, means that the this WI number, which are like the five brain charges, must all be larger than zero. On the contrary, if those were not larger than zero, if they were negative, it means that we actually have an anti brain which wraps anti holomorphic cycles. And it was shown in this context that SUSY supersymmetry is broken. So this equation, this anomaly cancellation condition, gives us a first hint on why do we use the five brain? I said I place a five brain between the observable and the hidden wall. The reason is without this W, it would be much harder to satisfy this equation and it would constrain severely the classes of the hidden sectors that we can use. Furthermore, and even worse, without a, a hidden sector at all, we could not get a five brain class, which is effective. So we need a, a, to find the hidden sector for this SU4 bundle. Another constraint comes from the dimensional reduction. As I said, we start from the Horzaba uh, with an 11D theory, and we integrate to when we redu dimensionally reduce two times, once to a 5D uh, theory. So we split the 11 dimensional metric to a 5D coordinates and the Calabria coordinate. And then we get from 5D to 4D by integrating over the 11 dimension. So the, we obtained the uh, effective theory. What this means is we, we, we obtained the effective theory after um, we integrate along the, uh, along the interval um, in the, uh, of the 5D BPS double domain wall. So all the moduli in the low energy theory are actually averages o o over these uh, moduli in the BPS domain wall. Because in the strongly coupled string, the, we turn on, um, compared to the weak couple case, we turn on non-zero modes of the anti-symmetric tensor in the bulk, which deforms the Calabia shapes a lot. So the shape of the Calabia, which is, corresponds to the observable sector, is not quite the same as the one it's in the hidden sector. So to obtain uh, the moduli in the effective theory, we average over them. And so the strong coupling condition is that we ensure that we're in, we're in this condition if the, if the hidden and the observable well are well separated. And this translates into this uh, length of the 11 dimension interval 
being larger than the, at least larger than the Kalabiowski. So why do we want to be in the strongly coupled case? In the weakly coupled, the problem with the weakly coupled heterotic string is that the, um, you get a, a Newton constant in 4D, which is too large. However, in strongly coupled theory, it was shown by Witten and uh, Banks and Dine that you can um, get consistent values, consistent hierarchies for these scales, the Newton constant, the um, gauge couplings and the immun immunification mass and the Planck mass. So we parameterized all um, couplings in our theory in terms of the, um, these determined values, which are phenomenologically consistent with all current phenomenology. For example, we have the uh, expansion parameter, strong coupled string expansion parameter, which we can express in terms of M Planck, M U, alpha gut, and we use the measured values uh, for immunification, for example, 10 to the 16, and alpha gut we choose to be almost 1 over 25, which is the value that we read from RG simulations of the B minus element system. Uh, last requirement is that we demand that the gauge couplings on both the observable and the hidden wall are positive. They don't have to be equal, but they certainly have to be uh, positive on each sector. This is actually a trivial requirement if we use uh, first order expansion, because uh, they would be always positive since WI and the moduli are always positive. However, in the strongly coupled string, because uh, you get more ex um, excitation modes, the next order correction can be so large that the gauge kinetic function, especially for the hidden sector, can be driven to be negative. This is unphysical, and we want to stay away for, from such for such a regime. And this this is why we enforce this requirement. So now we're we're ready to discuss the hidden sector that we use for this um, that we try to build. Um, so a hidden sector can, uh, in, in general, be composed of a non-abelian bundle and uh, an abelian bundle. We can we could turn on these. Uh, but so the, the realm of possibilities is pretty endless of what we can use. But in uh, our work, we use a hidden sector in which we turn on a bundle V2 with U1 structure group formed from a single line bundle L, which is uh, determined by the line bundle divisors L1, L2, and L3. This bundle, when we turn it on, it breaks the hidden sector E8 into an E7 cross U1. However, in order to embed this U1 connection associated to this U1 bundle, you need to first embed it into an SU2 connection, which then directly embeds into an E8. So the hidden sector bundle, it's not simply L, it cannot simply be an L, but it must be an L plus its conjugate. This hidden sector bundle must be slope stable as well, just as is the observable sector. So, which means that all sub-bundles of V2 must have a, a slope van, uh, smaller than uh, the slope of V2, which is also zero. But this cannot, can't actually happen per se because the sub-bundles of V2 are L and it's um, inverse, which can at most have uh, both vanishing slope. So this is what we'll do. We'll simply ask that the slope of the, um, the bundle L vanishes such that the bundle V2 is polystable, which is a condition enough to satisfy unbroken supersymmetry in 4D. Uh, the, it's uh, something interesting I want to talk about uh, the slope of the bundle L. In, uh, our, in our hidden sector, which has a U, an X, a U1, which commutes with the hidden U1, which we turn on, on the Calabi out, uh, the, the axions coupled to the, um, to the gauge, the accents of the Keller moduli and uh, of the dilaton start coupling to this uh, gauge U1 gauge field. So we have an anomalous, so-called anomalous transformations of the uh, moduli. And this anomalous transformation can be thought of scaling symmetry of a Keller manifold defined, uh, determined by S and T uh, moduli. And therefore, we get an expression for the uh, phi Apolis term in the four-dimensional perspective theory, which translates into a genus one correct, corrected expression for the slope. So this would be the normal, the usual uh, geometric slope of a line bundle on our Calabi out. But the physics of our um, 
um, system imposes a genus one correction. So in order to have unbroken supersymmetry, it needs that this slope vanishes. So, and I, and I can show this from a four dimensional perspective as well. The D term associated with the anomalous U1 is given by Fi minus uh, sum over the uh, fields charged uh, under this U1. It, it, there can be mat zero modes matter fields uh, after uh, in the hidden sector. But we consider that we don't turn on the values of these fields. We consider that uh, the bundle is really at the vanishing uh, Fi Apolis um, place in the Keller manifold. So the this flatness condition the um, forces the Fi term to be zero, which is um, exactly what the Donaldson, Nullenbeck, and Yang uh, equation predict predicted geometrically. Uh, so we need to find the bundle L, which solves this vanishing slope uh, condition. And we propose in our work a line bundle uh, 213, which has this following uh, vanishing slope surface in uh, the A1, A2, and A3 space. So, so the, this D term potential forces the moduli to sit on this surface. As a consequence of this so-called D term stabilization, the U1 gauge symmetry, the anomalous one is actually broken, but remains as a U1 global symmetry because the gauge boson acquired uh, eight, um, eight of the uh, axions related to this moduli and became massive. So having found uh, so we found a line a hidden sector which is stable in a certain region of the Kähler moduli space. But just as the SU4 bundle, this hidden sector cannot exist alone. They have to be matched together. So now we, we have our hidden sector bundle, our SU4 bundle, and the rest of the vacuum constraints. We want to piece them up together. And uh, after we do that, we find a solution for uh, this line bundle two and three when we place the fiber near the hidden sector. And um, this, this blue region is the region in which the hidden sector bundle is stable that we just described. And this brown region, in this brown region, all, all the rest of the constraints are satisfied. So everything, though the vacuum is completely consistent at the same time, only in this magenta region shown here. So uh, the killer, um, so this is the validity region of our theory. Now, the problem is the this is the region of validity, but nothing really fixes the moduli to sit on the surface. We're we are mixing, we're missing a moduli stabilization mechanism. The, the only potential at perturbative level that fixes the moduli to have certain value is this D term potential, which fixes the A1, A2, and A3 to sit on the surface. But other than that, the, there's no, there's nothing else to force the moduli to, to have these vacuum expectation values inside the surface. However, we can add non-perturbative potential such as a non-perturbative potential generated by gauge condensation. The idea is that were you to add such um, non-perturbative potential, you should find it in such a way that the moduli will sit in this validity um, surface. And now, Having found uh, this hidden sector with, uh, with, with this possible solution, I want to discuss some low energy physics you can do with it. So the, this bundle, um, the low energy spectrum on the hidden sector, uh, which corresponds to this bundle two and three, which I will use then as an example for the rest of, the, of this talk, uh, is, give, um, is given uh, here. So we, uh, the matter spectrum sits in the decompositions of the uh, adjoint T8 under uh, U1 cross E7. So we have the gate genos in the 133 decomposition of E7. And we have chiral fields in the 56, uh, which are in the 56 representation of E7. And we also have 58 chiral singlets under E7. Uh, this spectrum is uh, important. We didn't choose 213 just to have a solution. But we chose it in such a way that we have a gageino, we can have gageino condensation at a low energy scale. And to talk a bit about gageino condensation, this occurs when the uh, coupling of the E7 group becomes so strong that the gageino is condensed. So this is the RGE equation related to the gauge group of E7. 
and it can E7 can become strong at a small at a low energy scale only if B is positive and preferably small so that the gauge Gino condensation scale is lower as much as possible. We want to lower the gauge Gino's condensation as small as much as possible so that supersymmetry breaking can in principle occur at uh, detection levels um, compatible with the LHC. So uh, when the Gagino condensed, a bilinear Gagino Gagino forms, you get, you, uh, this is the scale uh, where it condenses and you get this kind of non-perturbative superpotential. Sebastian, you've got five more minutes roughly. Okay, okay. So this no kind of non-perturbative superpotential, if you solve for the F terms, you will find that you cannot not set them, F terms related to the dilaton and the Keller moduli, you will find that you cannot set them to zero at the same time. For, for this particular uh, potential. So, and therefore these, um, you break supersymmetry on the hidden sector and it's transmitted gravitationally to the observable sector. And you get the soft SUSY breaking Lagrangian of these types where there are, here are the gauge masses, the trilinear couplings and the, uh, and the scalar masses. The scale of these soft SUSY breaking uh, mass terms can, are, are given, um, are, are indicated best by the gravitino mass. The, where the gravitino mass is simply the scale of the condensate to the third power divided by m Planck squared. So what we did with uh, using this um, expression for the uh, non-perturbative superpotential generated by Gagino condensation, we can compute it on every, pla on every place in this uh, validity region of our theory, and we can compute the gravitino mass everywhere. So we found that we can lower the scale of SUSY breaking on the observable sector as low as uh, 10 to 10, 100 GeV or um, 10 TeV. So we found that it is possible in such a scenario with the hidden sector that we built to obtain a phenomenologically viable solution with supersymmetry that is possible to detect in the near future. There are a few caveats in this theory and I, want, I just want to briefly talk about modular stabilization. I already hinted that we don't really fix, the, there's no mechanism in which we fix the uh, vacuum expectation value of the dilaton and the Keller moduli. Well, I only shown that the D term fixes one combination of moduli, but there's, and, uh, but there's other, other um, moduli that are left unfixed. Unfortunately, the, the Gagino condensate potential that we find, superpotential generates a runaway potential. This does not fix um, the value the value of the dilaton and the scalar moduli. However, there are solutions of that. Uh, and this is how we can improve our model. We can, we can ask that we form two gauge condensates. We don't have to break the hidden E8 into E7 cross E1. We can break it into two non-abelian group and we can create a race spec mechanism. And another way is to turn on non-zero flux for a non-zero mode G prime defined on the bulk of the fury. And this would generate a potential of, uh, that we have generally, generally this form. Here, lambda is a constant, which is, uh, has the immunification scale. And here, uh, and, uh, this is the gauge condensate scale. So you could get a vanishing potential. So you can stabilize the moduli in this way with, by turning on this flux. The problem with this is that lambda is the, around the, uh, has the size of the immunification scale. So it means that you need to break SUSY at a very high scale, around 10 to the 13 GeV. This is not desired for people at LHC, for example, but it's in, there are papers which think this, which make this case very interesting. There's a paper, uh, there are two papers about inflation in which in the inflaton is the linear combination of the Higgs up um, and this neutrinos. And another one by Ibanez, uh, uh, Marquesano and Valenzuela, which, uh, this, which propose an inflaton, which is a linear combination of neutral Higgs up and Higgs down. So the inflaton potential in this case would be the M soft square times phi square and the slow roll inflation compatible with Planck data is only if, um, it, 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 it's compatible only if the, sup, the supersymmetry breaking occurs with at a very high scale. So this might be, so, so turning on this flux in our theory might be a way to stabilize the moduli, but also find an interesting mechanism for inflation. So uh, to sum up, uh, we found a vacuum configuration which satisfies a series of constraints. N equals one SUSY 
uh, we, found, we, we managed to um, preserve n equals one SUSE the compactification scale so that we have the freedom to break it later. Effective theory is anomaly free. Size, uh, we are in the strong decoupled regime, so the size of the 11 dimension is larger than the Calabiao scale. The gauge couplings unify at the unification scale at the predicted value. And then we also attach a SUSE breaking mechanism via gauge condensation in the hidden sector. We show that SUSE can be broken at energies ranging from 1 TeV to 10 to the 10 TeV. This is by no means a final model. It's like it's a first, it has many caveats, one of them I've shown, but we it's a first iteration of a model which can be improved. And it can be improved by adding an uh, a modular stabilization mechanism to it. And the one of them I just explained. And um, there's another um, subtlety here that in such a strongly coupled regime that we work, the the um, linear expansions are not very accurate, but you can get away from this strongly coupled regime by deforming the uh, hidden sector bundle by turning on non-zero uh, um, non-zero webs of the non-zero modes on the hidden sector, and that's what I want to show today. Yeah, I'm done. All right. Let's let's thank Sebastian, um, and if there is any question, please ask. Yeah, Sebastian, can I ask, so um, what about um, from this hidden sector, would you would you expect some glue balls confined from confinement, et cetera, that could mess up some relic abundances? So um, glue balls are formed, uh, is, it, is that a form of condensate or? Uh, well, I I I did I don't exactly remember your your meta spectrum on the side of the hidden sector, right? But in general, if you have hidden sectors, then they can confine. Mm -hmm. And sure. yeah, like give you some some blue balls, which can give you some dark matter. We 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 study right now. We're thinking about ways to produce dark matter on the hidden sector, but we're not thinking about glue balls. We're thinking if the moduli themselves can be dark matter, and we're also thinking that if the hidden matter on the, on the hidden sector could that be could the inflat on on the observable sector decay into that because the hidden matter would couple very weakly only gravitationally to the observable matter. In this context, but we're not thinking of glue balls at, at the moment. Okay, maybe maybe it's trivial that you can, since you said you have probably a lot of hidden um, matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, won't, there, won't there is there is a lot of hidden matter remaining even after I associate the Susie breaking mechanism, right. which uh, which makes gauge in a condensation. Okay. Uh, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. So. Is the physics that you've been talking about quite sensitive to vector bundle moduli? As what? To what? Vector bundle moduli. Is the physics sensitive to the vector bundle moduli? Uh, the moduli of the vector bundle, I mean, in this case, in uh, the, the vector bundle moduli of the SU4 bundle were studied in uh, the previous papers and they, they, found, um, they found this stability region. And I think it's shown in a in a paper that you can always stabilize them. In a in a, for the hidden sector, the hidden sector bundle moduli, I mean if if I had just a vanishing slope, I would I would only have the blind bundle divisors. The an interesting it, conversation starts mm -hmm. if I start doing bundle deformations. And but I think I can always stabilize those. So I'm not sure if they appear in the low energy spectrum. I see. Um, but to precisely obtain the EFT, low energy EFT, do, do, you, do you think it is absolutely necessary to understand like the moduli stabilization of the vector bundle? And then if, if that's the case, do you think you can stabilize those vector bundle moduli? Especially like given that the Clavier that you've been considering has a lot of Torsions. So I, I hope you can use some of the Walshed instantons to stabilize factable factable on the module explicitly. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that that's one. Um, we wanted to build. A, a, as I said, there are a few things that we we've, we've missed from this from this model. It's not a complete model. I mean, I'm not. We're not stabilizing. We're, we're placing the fiber into the hidden wall. But so we were mixing even a, even a mechanism to place to for the bonds and moduli. We're we definitely didn't think carefully about uh, stabilizing the moduli. Uh, we just wanted to show that it is it is possible to put all this body of research together and show that there is a validity region that they are compatible at the same time in principle. But to, from then on to do low energy physics, we've just shown that you could have gauge in a condensation and obtain some interesting physics with it. But there are more there are there are more caveats. It's, it's again it's the first iteration and it's not a full model. Mm -hmm. And this, this is what you just said, it's one way of improving it. Mm -hmm. I see. Thanks a lot.